Hey guys, so <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder and you know it's gonna be an exciting day when your hair doesn't fit in the frame. So today we're gonna be playing around with the new Giorgio Armani Neo Nude True to Skin Natural Glow Foundation. I have it in the shade 4.25 and I thought I would try and incorporate some of the other Armani Beauty products that I have in my collection that I really love, including the Lip Maestros. <laughs> I've talked about this endlessly, but I actually have not talked about them recently, so I thought I would resurrect these. And a lot of other products that I love that I have not used for you guys in a long time, like their quads. I absolutely love these, and I haven't I haven't used them in a while. Their eye tints that I really love. See if I can incorporate all of that. And then the very first, well not this actual bottle, but this is the very first product that I ever purchased from Armani Beauty, and that's the Fluid Sheer in number two. I think this is the third bottle that I've owned. So anyway, we'll be using that. We've got some fun stuff. It's not a full face of Armani Beauty, but I do have quite a bit. So let's go ahead and get started with um, primer. I have the Armani Prima Glow On Moisturizing Balm. And because I haven't used this new foundation yet. I'm only going to put this on half of my face. I just want to see how it's going to wear with primer and without. This moisturizing balm, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I actually purchased this when I tried the Tatcha Silk Canvas, which didn't really work out for me. And for my skin needs, this one is just so much better than the Tatcha because this is more moisturizing than the Tatcha, but it has such a similar texture to that. Anyway, for those of you out there that actually recommended this to me instead of the Tatcha, Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. This is such a gorgeous product. So I'm gonna be putting it on the right side of my face. But this just does such a wonderful job smoothing, uh, moisturizing, and I wouldn't say it's like a pore filler or anything like that. I have really dry skin, so I don't have really big pores, like maybe some visible pores right here, but for me, nothing problematic. What I always need is just as much moisture as possible. So if you have dry skin and that's your major concern, this is a wonderful, wonderful primer. And you need so little of it because again, it's a balm, so it just spreads and it smooths your skin out pretty quickly. I mean, it does create a nice canvas for makeup application, but this has over an ounce and I've had this for a long time. And you know, I've made a considerable dent in there, but this is gonna last me for Ever. And now let's dig into this Neo Nude. So again, I have it in the shade 4.25. When I talked about the Tom Ford uh, Soleil Glow Tinted Moisturizer, all these names are like, woo, in my head. The Tom Ford Soleil Glow Tinted Moisturizer, um, I did all these kind of comparison swatches uh, between this and some other products. So I'm gonna flash that up here right now. So going from left to right, we have the Tom Ford Soleil Glow Tinted Moisturizer, and that's in the shade 4.0 Fawn. Next to that, we have the La Mer, the Reparative Skin Tint in the shade Light. Then we have the Sisley Fito Hydra Tint in number one. Then we have the Sisley Tinted Sunscreen Cream in number one natural. And then we have the Armani Prima Color Control Glow Moisturizer in number two. And then we have the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude True to Skin Natural Glow Foundation, what we're talking about today, in 4.25. So this is not labeled to have any SPF. And I remember when I swatched all of those other kind of tinted moisturizers, the texture of this is very similar to the Sicily Fito Hydra Tint and also the new Tom Ford uh, Soleil Glow Tinted Moisturizer. Um, it was a little bit thicker than the Armani uh, Prima, the color control, that one is a little bit uh, finer. It's a little bit thinner in consistency. Uh, not that it's runny, but it is a little bit uh, thinner than this. So I'm gonna just go ahead and squeeze a little bit out on to the back of my hand. And I'm not sure that this shade match is the best for me. It looks a little bit deep for my skin tone. Oh, and before I forget, this is made in France. There is a 12 month shelf life once it's been opened. And this is a 35 mil 1.18 fluid ounce bottle. And the packaging is a plastic squeezy tube. All right, so I'm just gonna apply some um, to the right side of my face. This is the side that has the primer. And I'm gonna blend out with my BK Beauty foundation brush. Once I spread this shade out, it actually it looks like it cools down a bit. So I do think this is a good match. So on the website, this was labeled as light 
with neutral undertones and they actually had a couple in there that were like light with neutral undertones with like the same description and I just went for 4.25. So I think this actually works. Oh, I'm excited. I was really, really concerned. I thought it was going to be much too warm on my skin tone, but I think it looks nice. I'm just going to apply a little bit more. When it comes to foundation, I really like adding a lot of light layers. I just feel like it works in better instead of adding like a whole bunch at once, hoping to get a lot of coverage right off the bat. I really like doing it in light layers. It's a little bit more time consuming, but I think it ends up just looking a little bit more seamless and kind of like flawless. And I feel like it just blends into your skin a little bit better that way. All right, there it is on my skin. So you can probably see um, the biggest difference on my forehead there. And the coverage is pretty decent. I wanna say it's a light medium. I do feel like the discoloration around my eyes is nice to camouflage. I could probably add a little bit of concealer. And the finish, I thought it was gonna be much glowier because I do have it over that glow on moisturizing balm, but it actually is uh, not quite as radiant as I thought it was gonna be. It's a little bit more of like a natural skin-like finish, which I think is very nice. I think it makes it a little bit more versatile across the skin types. If I feel like it's a little bit too radiant and I have really, really dry skin, I just don't think it's ever gonna work for oily skin types, but I think this could work for oily skin types. It doesn't really have that kind of like really emollient feel. When I just wore the Tom Ford, the uh, glow tinted moisturizer that just came out, that one had a lot more like emollients to it, a lot more radiance. This is much tamer in terms of radiance versus that one. Let me um, apply the rest of this to the other side of my face and I think I'll need a little bit more. This does have a uh, denatured alcohol in here. It is the one, two, it's the eighth ingredient in here. So there probably isn't a ton of it, but I felt like I could feel, you know, when you put alcohol in your skin, there's like that slight like cooling effect. Even if it's a minuscule amount, there's that slight cooling effect. I thought I felt that. It's something I don't necessarily like the feel of on my skin. Uh, sometimes when I find that it's in foundations, like the Pat McGrath uh, foundation, I just feel like sometimes my skin will feel like a little bit like tight at the end of the day after wearing it all day. But there are some foundations with denatured alcohol in there and my skin feels fine. Um, like the Guerlain, the Perore Gold, that one has denatured alcohol in there. And that one wears actually really beautifully. It's very comfortable on the skin. So we'll have to see how this one goes. So I will be wearing um, this makeup look all day and I will leave a pinned comment down below just to let you know how it wore, how it feels. If I do feel like I feel any sort of tightening of the skin, I will let you know down below in the description box. I'm gonna add a little bit more to my forehead. I like the way this foundation looks on my primer side more it looks a little bit more smooth and i feel like i have a little bit of texture down here and i feel like it has kind of caught on to this texture where on the primer side it looks very very smooth and i have the same kind of texture on both sides but it looks smooth on this side and on this side it looks like it's kind of caught it a little bit all right next up i've got my armani luminous silk concealer and this i have in the shade 4.5 and i'm just going to add some underneath my eyes here and I'm just working this in with my Trish McAvoy number 55 brush. And next up for powder, this is the only Armani powder I have. Um, and this is the Neo Nude Fusion Powder. I used to have loose powder from them. I didn't like it at all because it was very, very glittery. I won't even say shimmery. It was actually like micro glittery and I did not like it at all. And I used to have the Luminous Silk uh, foundation compact, but it got too old, so I um, had to throw that out. So this is the only Armani powder I have left. So I have it in the shade number four. And this powder I like. I like the finish of this powder, but I feel like it can look a little bit thick if you're not careful. So I'm just gonna dust a very light layer of this powder down, and I'm gonna use my Sonia G Face Pro brush. There is definitely some coverage with this powder so i need to make sure that i blend it in it's not very translucent it's kind of it's kind of like a light powder foundation but i think it works nicely if you don't mind a little bit of 
a sheen to your setting powder. I think it works nicely as a setting powder too. So I have the A contour from the Neo Nude line. This is like the little cream contour. I used to have the cream highlight and a cream blush, but I declutter those because I just never ever reach for them. But I don't have a lot of cream like contours, actual contours. This is not a bronzer at all. I don't know if you guys can see the bottom of this bottle here, but it's very, very gray. So in terms of cream contours, I didn't have a lot, so I decided to keep this. Uh, but I do like this product. It is really, really kind of like beginner friendly and goof proof. And uh, because I just put a light layer of powder down, I feel like this cream product works nicely over the powder. It's not too heavy. It's not gonna move anything around. So I'm just gonna blend that in. You can see it just blends like almost instantly. It has such a nice texture. And because it has this doe foot applicator, it makes it really easy to contour like your nose if you want. So that's the A Contour. I don't know if there are shades in this, but it says it's number 20 on the bottom. I think when these first came out, when I purchased this maybe a couple years ago, this was the only shade. So I don't know if they've expanded the range, but this is 20 for your reference. Next up, I've got my Fluid Sheer in number two. So this is, I wanna say this was like the first liquid highlighter to ever be made. This is such an old product. This is when Pat McGrath um, started this Armani Beauty line. Oh my gosh, like back in the early 2000s, I feel like this is when I purchased this. So I love this. And at one point I had a whole bunch of different shades, but I had those bottles for so, so long. So I actually decluttered, well, threw them away, I should say, um, because they were just smelling really kind of like alcoholy. I kept this one because this was the newest one I had purchased. And <laughs> I squeezed out way too much, but here is the shade of number two. It's like, it's a beautiful kind of like light flesh tone with some like gold shimmer in it. Oh, uh, it's, it's really, really pretty. This product has really stood the test of time. So I've got my Chantecaille cheek brush and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this. And because it's like light, I feel like I can put this all over <laughs> my face. And since I don't have any Armani blushes, much to my surprise, I just dug through my drawers again just to make sure, but I don't have any Armani blushes. I'm gonna go ahead and use this cream blush that I purchased a while ago and I have not used it yet. I'm pretty embarrassed about that fact. This is the Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks Blush Stick in Pop It. And it's this beautiful like fuchsia pink. I'm gonna grab my Westman Atelier Blender Brush and run it across the stick and just kind of press onto my cheekbones. Ooh, such a pretty cool, cool pink. Before we move on, this was another like long, long time favorite of mine. This is the Giorgio Armani bronzer. And I think I made it through like one change that they made and I think maybe these are discontinued but this is their Sun Fabric Sheer Bronzer and I remember the first version they came out with I was in shade 200 and then they kind of changed I don't know if they changed the formula changed up the line I'm not really sure this was years ago um, I ended up being shade 100 which is what this is so I'm thinking actually I want to bronze up <laughs> like my neck chest area this is so white especially compared to my face now so I think I'm just going to grab my um, refer P22 brush and go into this bronzer. I do love this bronzer. It has such a good tone. It's very, very neutral and it has just the slightest hint of red in there. So it just looks so natural. All right, I think that looks a little bit better. And then next, uh, I've got these eye quads and eye tints. So I have two of the newer Armani eye quads. I don't know if you guys remember the older ones. It used to like look like stripes in here. So they redesigned the uh, layout of the quads and then came out with all of these different like color stories. So this one is Avant Premier. It's a brown one. You can see I've used that, loved that one quite a bit. And then I think I want to use this one today because this is a beautiful one. This is Paparazzi number five. And it's very, very cool toned, which I think will go nicely with this cheek color. And I do have this eye tint 
in the shade number 43. It's like a silver, which may be complementary to this. So I think I'm gonna put the powder down first and then layer this on top. That sounded wrong, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> All right, I've got my Sonia G Crease 2 brush. I'm gonna go into this taupey shade here. And I'm just gonna add this to my outer corner, my socket line area. This is such a beautiful, soft transition shade. And then next I'm gonna take the Sonia G Mini Booster brush, go into the navy blue color. And I'm just gonna add this to the outer corner of my eye here. And I just want to use this blue color very, very lightly. I'm not really going for like <laughs> an evening smoky look. I just want to add a little bit of dimension here. I'm taking that crease two, yeah, crease two brush and blending over the blue. I'm gonna take my refer pencil brush, this is the 03 brush, and go into the navy. Line my lower lash line. And now I'm gonna take this eye tint and I'm just gonna put it like in the inner corners of my eyes. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to just dab a little bit right in there. I'm gonna do one eye at a time because I like letting these set just a little bit and then you can kind of like move them around. Otherwise, if you try moving them around when they're too wet, you just end up kind of smearing it instead of blending it out. I don't think I put enough down. Let me put some more down here. Grabbing my Wayne Goss 18 brush. So there's a really light kind of like wash there, which I wanted. I wanted just kind of like the shimmeries of it. I really didn't want to see like a silver streak. And that's what I really like these eye tints for. They just make like a really nice kind of like pretty subtle wash that gives you just a little bit of like this glimmer. And then I'm going to take my Sonia G Worker Pro brush and go into this satin shade up here. It's like a it's like a cement shade. And I'm going to kind of blend that into the eye tint, the silver eye tint, and then bring it over towards the navy. Just kind of like bridging those two colors together. Oh, I lied, I'm gonna do one more thing. I've got my Sony G Builder One brush, and I'm gonna go into this uh, shimmery, it's like a snowflake shade. And I'm gonna put it on my inner corners here. and then just add it to the inside of my lower lash line. All right, I don't have any um, Armani mascara or eyebrow products, so I'm just gonna do that uh, off camera and I'll be right back. Now it's time for lips. So I took out my favorite Armani lip product, which is the Lip Maestro. So I pulled out the two colors that I uh, figured I'd be using. I think I'm gonna use this one today, which is color 508. Uh, but this color 202 is like one of my all-time favorites. It's like, it's very nude. It just kind of goes with everything. But I think I'm going to use this one today because it's a little bit on the cooler, pinker side and it has a little bit of shimmer to it uh, versus this one. This one is Shimmerless. And this Lip Maestro formula is so interesting because it's very moussey and then it feels like velvet on the lips. Um, they're not like liquid lipsticks where they'll just sort of like wear through anything, meals or whatever, but they are fairly long lasting, but they're really, really comfortable. All right, so there is 508 applied. Just love it, absolutely love it. And again, this one is 202, which is a great nude neutral. I used to talk about this one all the time. I wanna say maybe like a year or so ago, or maybe even more at this point. I'm really losing track of time. Anyway, I need to resurrect these because these are awesome. So that is it for this video. Again, check the comments down below. I'm gonna leave a pinned comment as to how this new Neo Nude True to Skin Natural Glow Foundation, how it wore, how I like it, how it feels on my skin. Um, let me just do a quick inspection right now just to let you know how it's wearing. Again, it's been about an hour. So one thing I'm noticing is that I don't feel like my lines are very 
camouflaged. I don't necessarily think that they're being emphasized. I don't feel like this is making them look worse, but definitely not doing as good of a job as a lot of my other base products in terms of like uh, kind of blurring and camouflaging lines. So that's my one observation. But again, I will leave a pinned comment. I will let you know if this line situation, if it gets any worse. If it doesn't get any worse, I think that's fine. Looks good around the nose, looks good down here on my chin, which is where mysteriously a lot of uh, foundations start to look very, very cakey. Again, check for that pinned comment. So thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you're all staying healthy and safe and home if you can. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.